please. I've just, I've just come back to my flat and the door was locked, so I crawled to the window and my flatmate's covered in blood in the bathroom. How can someone stab 24 times, despite claiming that I love you the most? How the thinking that, if I can't have her, nobody can, took away life of a beautiful girl? You should breathe in. I don't know, I can't, I can't look, I'm sorry. Okay, I can't try, look. try and stay calm. Oh. Alice, Alice, oh my god, she's saved me, she's dead. No. We bring exclusive details in a true crime documentary of a Leicestershire girl namely Alice Ruggles who fell victim of brutal thinking, if I can't have her, nobody can. In today's true crime case we will unfold all details leading to Alice Ruggles' murder at the hands of Harry de Hillen. Before starting this true crime story, we would like to request you that do let us know in comments that as per your views, who is to blame in this tragic case of Alice Ruggles' murder. Alice was born on December 24, 1991 to Dr. Sue Hills and Clive Ruggles. She had two older siblings, Nick and Emma, and a younger brother, Patrick. The family of six were close-knit, even as the children grew up and moved away from home, they stayed in close contact via the family WhatsApp chat. Alice and her siblings were raised in Leicestershire, in the small, quiet village of Tur Langton. When she was 18, Alice attended Northumbria University, located about 200 miles north of Leicestershire. She graduated from university in 2014 and soon got a job at the UK broadcasting company Sky in Newcastle, England. Alice moved into a flat in Gateshead, a large town located on the opposite side of the River Tyne from Newcastle. Harry de Hillen when he moved to the UK, was originally from India. He was an only child, raised in a devout Sikh household. The de Hillen family moved often as a result of Harry's father's position in the army. When Harry graduated from high school, he went to university to pursue a degree in strategy management. As a part of the degree program, he was given the opportunity to study at Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh. He used to drink heavily on nights out and enjoyed the company of a number of different women. On graduating from university, Harry decided to enlist in the British Army after representatives came on a recruitment visit to Queen Margaret University. While stationed in Afghanistan, Harry regularly used Facebook to keep up with friends and family in India and Scotland. It was in October of 2015 that he was scrolling through a friend's photos when he came across a picture of a pretty girl with long, dark hair and a warm, kind smile. Harry commented on the photo, writing how beautiful she was. It was not long before he received a message from Alice Ruggles. From that point on, Alice's life would never be the same again. The two began messaging back and forth, and then video chatting several times a week. Harry was sweet and charming online, and Alice fell for him quickly. When Harry returned to the UK from Afghanistan, the two met in person for the first time. They first spent an enjoyable week together in Newcastle, and then another Edinburgh, where Harry's barracks were located. Harry then returned to Afghanistan for his final tour of duty. After Harry returned to the UK in April, noticeable changes occurred in Alice's demeanor. Once bubbly and engaged, she became withdrawn and distant, losing weight rapidly. She isolated herself from friends, it became evident that her boyfriend, Harry de Hillen, was the cause. Contrary to his online persona, Harry was possessive and controlling, dictating Alice's life and accusing her of disloyalty. Meanwhile, he flirted with other women to incite jealousy. When a woman from a dating site contacted Alice in early August, she ended the relationship. However, removing Harry from her life proved challenging. Despite her efforts to distance herself, Harry bombarded her with calls and threats of blackmail, and even attempting to sabotage her new relationship with Mike. Despite Harry's efforts, Alice and Mike's bond remained strong, while Harry's jealousy and obsession only intensified. Hey Alice, after we spoke and you didn't want to speak, so you didn't want to call me again, so that's why I decided to come down and give you flowers and chocolates. If you want to take it, you can take it. If you want to bin it, you can bin it. Sorry, and I'm sure that I'm really I'm sorry. When she didn't call, he made the two and a half hour drive from his barracks in Edinburgh to Alice's flat in Gateshead. Once he arrived, he climbed over the wall into the backyard and knocked on Alice's bedroom window. She caught a glimpse of Harry backing away from the window. After experiencing a frightening incident, 
Alice contacted the police out of fear. Hi there, I met up with my boyfriend about three months ago and since then he's been sending me a lot of messages even though I've asked him not to contact me. Tonight he's um, had to knock at my door um, and then when I went and looked, got like a little and there was no one there and then it happened again um, two or three times. The operator presented her with two options, hiring a solicitor for a restraining order or issuing Harry with a police information notice PIN which meant Harry would face arrest if he approached or contacted her again. An officer from Northumbria police contacted Harry's barrack superior. Despite warnings from colleagues, friends, Harry persisted. Police contact again. Alice had been instructed by the police to contact them if Harry got in touch with her again. That's what she did. Good evening, Northumbria Police. Jeff speaking. How can I help? Hi there. Um, yeah, I, I've been in touch with the police. Um, um, uh, the, the somebody's been issued with a pen so that they, they can't contact me. However, I've had a had a letter off them. Right. Okay. Do you uh, report the picture, picture of the pen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who is it from? Um, who's the letter from, or yeah. who's the? Uh, yeah. um, Harry Dillon. So is that who the, the pen is against? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, can I see your name? Yeah, it's, it's Alice Ruggles. An obsession turns deadly. Five days after disappointing phone calls with the police, Alice, anxious about Harry, distracted herself by planning for Mike's visit from Germany. Engrossed in texts with Mike and contemplating weekend plans, Alice remained unaware that Harry had been lurking in her backyard, conducting reconnaissance. She left her office after saying goodbye to her colleague without knowing what Harry was waiting for her. and this was the last time Alice was seen alive. As she entered into her room, Harry broke in through an open window, driven by a sinister determination. Harry cornered Alice in the bathroom, armed with a kitchen knife, brutally attacked her, inflicting 24 injuries, including fatal ones to her throat and spinal cord. The motive seemed clear. If I can't have her, nobody can. Alice's flatmate Maxine McGill came home from work to discover the front door of the flat locked. Once inside, she was greeted by a horrific sight. There lay Alice lying on the bathroom floor, blood pooling around her. Maxine immediately called 999. Thank you, go ahead call this. Please, I've just, I've just come back to my flat and the door was locked, so I crawled through the window and my flatmate's covered in blood in the bathroom. Is she breathing? I don't know, I can't, I can't look, I'm sorry. Okay, I try, look. try and stay calm. Is she covered in blood, did you say? Yes. Yeah. Okay, bear with us two seconds. Harry de Hillen was arrested in a matter of hours back at his barracks in Edinburgh. It was not difficult for detectives to come to the conclusion that Harry was guilty of Alice's murder. His phone records put him in Gateshead at the time she was killed. They discovered Alice's blood on his steering wheel the following day, he was charged with murder. Despite describing the death of the girl he supposedly loved so deeply, Harry was stony-faced and unemotional throughout the trial. He clearly felt no remorse. The jury found Harry de Hillen guilty of Alice's murder. In April 2017, Harry de Hillen was sentenced to life in prison, with a minimum of 22 years. Alice's family said that they believed that her death was preventable. It was difficult for them to comprehend that. Although Alice described in her first phone call to the police that she was being stalked and provided ample evidence, the police and the army were unable to support and protect her. Respected viewers, thank you for watching. If you found this content intriguing, please consider liking the video. It greatly supports me within the algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe for more global true crime stories.